In their wars, the Maya made use of a range of deadly weapons. These included the iconic wooden club known as the Makult, the spear thrower, and according to some traditions, hollowed vegetables filled with hornets used as grenades. The Maya civilization developed in an area of Mesoamerica that today incorporates southeastern Mexico, Belize, and Guatemala, as well as parts of Honduras and El Salvador. The first Maya cities developed around 750 BC, while the last Maya city, Nespetan, was captured by the Spanish Empire in 1697. Considered a Stone Age culture by some archaeologists, the Maya had minimal access to metals and minimal knowledge of metalworking techniques. As such, the weapons were quite distinct from European weapons of the time, namely swords and matchlock muskets. The Maya instead made creative use of the materials they had access to – wood, jadeite, and obsidian, a volcanic glass that could be sharpened into deadly blades. One of the main goals of warfare was to acquire sacrificial victims. Sacrifice legitimized the ruler by intimidating rivals and awing the citizens. Certain events, such as the death of a leader or birth of an heir, may have required sacrifice. Mayan cities kept some distance between themselves and their enemies with an estimated mean distance of 55 kilometers, about two day days travel between major settlements. War was fought by and for elites, that is, the Maya and non-Maya nobility. This may be because the long distances that had to be traveled between cities. One estimate puts about 500 to 1,000 men on the battlefield, on each side of the conflict, at maximum, based on estimates about the logistics of the journey, such as amount of weight carried and how much food was needed on the journey. It is thought that enemies would project missiles at long range, then as they advanced on each other, discipline probably declined, allowing individuals to attempt personal feats of bravery. The main body of the population did not participate in most conflicts, unless it involved the overthrow of a ruler. Although the Mayans had projectile technology, much of the actual fighting was done at close range with thrusting, stabbing, and crushing. Weapons were crafted mostly from obsidian and chert, obsidian being the sharpest but more brittle. Shaping chert or obsidian into bifacial projectile points and attaching them to atl darts, spears, and arrows was the dominant technology. Although bows and arrows were used, spears and makwawit remained much more common, whereas chipped flint was common in close-range combat knives. Against Spanish invaders and Mesoamerican rivals, the Maya used these five lethal weapons. If you haven't already, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Obsidian Edged Club the Makwawit is a wooden club that was used by Mesoamerican civilizations, including the Aztecs and the Maya. Sometimes referred to as the obsidian chainsaw, the Makwawit had sides embedded with narrow, flake-like blades typically produced from obsidian. Though no specimens remain, one is depicted in a carving at Chichen Itza. The Makwawit predates the Maya and Aztecs, but had become widely distributed in Mesoamerica by the time of the Spanish colonization of the Americas in the late 15th century. An example of a Makwawit was captured during the 6th century conquest of Mexico, during which the Spanish conquistadors and their indigenous allies subdued the Mexica, or Aztecs, though it was destroyed by fire in 1884. In his account of the conquest, the conquistador Bernan Diaz del Castillo described the Makwawit as between 0.9 and 1.2 meters long and 75 millimeters wide. A groove was located along the edge. Flint or obsidian pieces were fixed inside, probably by bitumen. The club may have been used one-handed or two-handed, depending on the size. It was capable of disabling opponents, but could also decapitate a horse. Spear Thrower The Maya made use of the spear thrower known as an atlatl, or hulche. Common across multiple pre-Columbian cultures, atlatls were especially prominent in central Mexico. Effectively an extension of a throwing arm, the spear thrower is a tool which uses leverage to throw darts and javelins. The butt end of the projectile is placed into the cup of the spear thrower and then is thrown with an overhand wrist motion. An important figure described in Maya Stile is a ruler from Teotihuacan called Spear Thrower Owl. He was perhaps a ruler of Teotihuacan in the 4th and 5th century AD, responsible for expanding the city's influence in the Maya region. The name Spear Thrower Owl is one invented by archaeologists to describe a symbol that appears in Maya glyphs of an owl holding a spear thrower, 
The visual is stylized in such a way that it suggests it represents a name. Bow and arrow. The Maya used bows and arrows. According to the anthropologist David Webster, Maya warfare would often involve missiles being projected at long range between advancing enemy forces. Bows were important and deadly Maya weapons, but they were also useful for hunting. Axe. Spears were much more common in Maya warfare than bows and arrows, but most of the fighting in Maya warfare took place at close range with weapons such as the Mahuawit and axes. The Maya used axes with heads of stone, obsidian, bronze, or jade. A sharp edge could kill an opponent, while a flat edge could be used to maim opponents in order to capture them. Obsidian was widely used in Mesoamerican daily and ritual life. It is a relatively easy to work material thanks to its glassy internal structure, which means it breaks in predictable ways. As well as being used in weaponry, obsidian objects have been found in important tombs, while obsidian flakes have been found linked to offerings at the Maya site of Tikal. Hornet Grenade The Kiche, a Mayan-speaking indigenous group, are renowned for writing a book of myths and epics known as Popol Vuh. The text includes a beguiling reference to the use of wasps and hornets as a weapon of war. The folktale describes containers being filled with hornets and wasps. Ahead of a confrontation, they are released to frustrate and ultimately defeat the aggressor. On the other hand, the folktale's antagonists are jaguars, and the defenders are crickets in league with rabbits. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.